Hello people, another little video for your educational needs. Capitalization and the use of language is very important and I'm going to explain why now. Um, it's a way of conveying messages uh, or conveying a meaning or a, a yeah, message in a certain way uh, without saying it in the wrong way. And what I mean by that is we're going to look at some World War One propaganda posters to get people to enlist into the army of their own free will. Uh, so here is, is one of the most, you know, the most simplified versions of it. Again, it's a picture, it's a drawing. It scribbles on a bit of paper and it has some text. And it's, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to evoke an emotion, make you think proud, look at those steely eyes, you know, the brave Tash. The dutiful hat and the um, beckoning, pointing finger, all in the need of uh, the country to recruit men to fight in the army. And it's important here, we're going to cover a few, a few principles of, of text, and everything here is my opinion, but we're going to start seeing some themes and some patterns arrive, and um, hopefully it'll get you an idea of how the use of capitalization, the use of orders around text, the colour of text, uh, they all have their little nuances, their own little meanings. I'm by no means an authority on the figure, but I know enough to get the level of understanding up a bit, so people can, can see how it works. Um, so yeah, World War One. it's always nice when the, uh, the powers that be... Or, you know, when people get worried, nervous, frightened, scared, they tend to make mistakes, or yeah, nervous particularly, you know, they tend to make mistakes, take, tend to make errors, or they just, you know, need, necessitates that, you know, we need to be blunt about us, we need this now, we need this now, 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 you know, oh God, at, at all costs, you know, I'm in a desert, I'm thirsty, I'm going to die, here's a million pounds for a bottle of water, you know, needs, needs dictate uh, your behaviour in, in that respect. So sometimes it can be predictable. And when you need men to fight and defend your system, um, then, uh, yeah, you know, the messages become very plain, very blunt, very clear. So this is the most famous one, I think, and it's the most simplest one we're going to start with, which is, your country needs you. Now, it's in, it's in speech marks. And the speech marks are um, obviously saying someone's quoting this. But again, it's it's a drawing of somebody who may have a likeness. It's, it's kind of think of like uh, South Park, Simpsons, or Family Guy. You know, they can get away with drawing a lot of characters and imitating a lot of celebrities without much recourse, without much um, fallback. And he says, "That's just a picture. Does that look like you? Oh, that's just purely by coincidence, mate. You know, I created that with my pencil, my my hand, and a piece of paper. If that looks like you, mate, that's just purely coincidence." I must be a very good artist because I was trying to draw someone else or a very bad artist. I was trying to draw this person. So it's very subjective. This is completely subjective material. So even though this guy might have a stunning likeness to the guy, I, I did research who this guy was. Um, it had an interesting life uh, all over the place, forwarding the cause of the British Empire. But anyway, so that's the picture on a piece of paper. The fact that it has a likeness to something is, is your own mind tricking you. And then you have the, the hieroglyphs or the writing, the scratches on the piece of paper that, that read to us who have been educated how to read this language. It's your country needs you, all capitalised. So when it's capitalization, which I've covered in a few videos, I think um, I at least did it in the Charlie Guard series, and I think I did it in another one about capitalization. Oh yeah, that was it with the Rob S, the Rob S video. Um, so capitalization, your country needs you. So what you're actually looking at here is a picture, no doubt, of someone's interpretation of how someone looks, and then nothing. Whoever's written that is not for you, it's for them. They wrote it there for their own benefit. It has nothing to do with you. And remember, you is an interesting word in our language, being English. Is um, You is actually also used as use, use people. Y-O-U-S-E. It's a plural of many, many, many. So it can be many, many things. Use people, you people, as in like a crowd of people. Because people are singular as well as plural. So use, use guys, use men. 
Um, and then you have the old-fashioned way of doing it, if you look in the Shakespeare thing, where you have thy and thou, which is a beautifully si simple way of referring to someone as character, as in character, or as not in character, is the way you, although I like to look at it. So think about, you know, to make it hip and trendy for young people today, think about Darth Vader. He's probably one of the more recent characters who uses what is thy bidding, my master. What is thy bidding, my master? Two crucial, thy and my. So thy is master. He's talking to his master, the man who's acting as master, thy. Okay, so that's the character. And if he says, what does thou wish, uh, Dave, <laughs> which obviously he wouldn't say. I don't know what the emperor's real name was. I'm sure he has a real name. But, you know, uh, what does thou wish of me, Dave? Yeah, what is thy bidding, master? It's, it's basically he's in character. He's speaking to the emperor, who just happens to be Dave, um, and that's essentially how that works. But the way that it's changed now in modern English is that regardless of thou or thy, it's just you. So the kind of the the, <laughs> the clarity of thy speaking to thy master, or what what does thou wishest of me, Dave? Is, is completely blurred. Because if I said thy, you would know I'm speaking to the emperor and I'm, I'm waiting for your bidding. I will do what you're bidding. I will do as you're told. But what does thou wish of me, Dave? Well, I'm the emperor. Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't talking to you as the emperor. I was talking to you as Dave. Thou wish. I can try and grant your wish, Dave, but I can't promise it depending on what you ask. So one is man to man in that respect and one is character to character. Darth Vader to um, the Emperor, because obviously Darth Vader knows he serves the Emperor, but Dave, who acts as Emperor, has no inherent authority over his fellow man who was, oh, I can't remember, Anakin Skywalker, yeah? So, so Anakin says, thou, what is that, <laughs> what does thou wish of me, Dave? So that's Anakin to Dave, and then, um, what is thy bidding? my, which is again the plural, master. It, it takes a bit of getting your head around it. It took me God knows how long. But once you get it, you kind of you kind of see. So when they stick you there, it's it, you can mean it. It can mean it, both of those things at the same time, or it can just mean one of them. So it's, a, it's kind of a, a mess, really. Um, and when it says, and when it's all capitalized like this, obviously it's written. My, my, my granddad always wrote in capital letters. And I always wondered, why does he always write in capitalization? And I'm starting to realize it. I don't know if he's been taught that or if he knew what he was doing, but he always wrote in capitals. And I think whenever you write in capitals, these are your own words that you belong to you. And if you just happen to read them and interpret them, that's your fault, not mine. That's how I, how, how I look back on it now and see what, 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 was, um, what he was actually doing, whether Von whether he was consciously doing it or not, I don't know, but it, it, it works. So again, here, we are essentially looking at, my point being, a blank piece of paper. Nothing there. Let's go to the next picture. Uh, oh, is it? oh, it's being funny now, is it? Oh, God. Let's go to this one. So similar to the American version. Look at the use of borders. Always be careful of the use of borders, red line borders. Um, I, think, I think Carl Lentz has been over the red line borders. There's something about... Hannibal invading Rome and when Hannibal took the elephants over to the Alps apparently the Romans would just f put lines of blood in the soil to stop the elephants because the elephants would smell the blood and they would know not to cross take that as you will okay but you'll see the use of red ink and blue ink and black ink so you being in red ink a line you do not cross I want and you know it's a pointy man again I don't even know if, if that's a fictional... I haven't researched if that's a fictional character or a completely artistic, made-up, proud-looking, pointy guy with a lovely hat. So this could be a complete work of fiction, or it could actually be relating... A, it doesn't matter. Either way, it's a fiction, whether it's a real person or not. It's a piece of paper that's got a drawing on it. And if you think this doesn't look like a horse and it looks like a man pointing a finger at you, well, that's your own fault. So I... Again, this has got a red border, which is very interesting. All this has got red border, and then it goes to a black border written in red. And again, all capitalization. So um, this this does this is this is whoever's created this piece of paper doesn't want you to read it, or you should not interpret his work or what the meaning of it is. Uh, so again, we're looking at another blank piece of paper. Um, 
I want, so remember want, want, let none be found wanting, want not, want not, waste not, yeah? Very important things that seem to have gone out of um, fashion nowadays in, in our modern culture of needy, needy, wanty, wanty nature. I want it now. Oh, mummy, I want a biscuit. Oh, mummy, I want this. I mean, parents even teach their kids, <laughs> parents, mums and dads even teach their kids. Uh, what would you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? What do you want for your birthday? Oh, mummy, I want this. So it's it's just a complete degrading of like understanding that when you want something, you want it because you're needy. I want it. And then if you want something from someone, it's quite possible that you're going to end up having a debt for it. Okay, and that's that's the biggest concern of all is that in the in the good old days, you know, debt was owing someone money is an issue. Because if you don't pay for it in this life, you'll pay for it in the next life. That was always the belief. Um, and I, I don't know. I'll just bring up something I saw on LBC recently where um, I actually phoned up about this one. But it was quite an interesting point. It's, um, what's her name? Sheila Fogarty. Or Fogarty. She was, uh, she was um, doing a radio show in relation to, uh, I don't know how it got onto the subject of, oh, it was something to do with uh, the death of the, um, the Playboy Mansion guy. Um, and they were doing a show on it, and there was, uh, Sheila was just doing a, a little chat about it. And this one guy phoned up about his experiences of um, uh, Hugh Hefner, was it? Um, Hugh Hefner's uh, time in London before he, he sold all his business and went on his way. And um, there was a story that this guy was a you know, well-spoken chap, and he was saying, oh, was Hugh Hefner, fine guy. Went to one of his establishments, loads of drinking, loads of casinos, lovely ladies everywhere, everything was civilised. Beautiful. Boom. And then he was talking about um, this uh, Middle Eastern Arabic man who was winning at the tables, winning hard, doing really well. And at the end of the night, he gave £25,000 check to the daughter of a man who brought his daughter to such a swingers club. Okay, so a dad brought his daughter to a swingers club and she ends up getting a twenty five grand check. No questions asked from an Arab man who was doing well at the casino tables. Now, everybody drew the assumption, including Sheila, that that 25 grand was for sex, which is completely wrong. Because if you're, if you're a dad and you're there with your daughter and a man offers you, you know, he's obviously not going to say, I want to sleep with your daughter, because that just wouldn't work in any realms, uh, even for 25 grand. You might have to add a couple of zeros on that uh, to get that one done. But he offered it nonetheless on the basis that she brought him luck. Or his belief, because obviously that's nonsense. But in his own head, his winning and success was due to this, let's say, beautiful or not, beautiful woman who was young, attractive, and she was there interested in watching the game. She's probably never seen gambling before. And as a reward or as, as a payment of the debt for bringing him luck, he gave her a no questions asked 25 grand check. And the dad initially said, no, 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 can't take it. And then the Arabic man said, oh, please do not offend me. Please take this gift. Okay. Now, everyone presumed that it was something to do with sex at the time. This is what I tried to phone up and tell uh, Sheila about, is that when you accept something, when you want something, when you're needy for something, okay, now you should always accept a present, but I won't go into that too much. Uh, you don't have to accept a present if it's going to do you harm, which in this case it probably would. But, you know, you, if someone offers you a present and, you know, if, if a poor homeless guy presents a gift to you which could be like a stone that he's scratched into a dice and that's the best he can do then you do not insult him by saying what the fuck do i need a stone dice for you stupid homeless poor person because within his means that is the greatest present that he can give you okay he's put his time i mean you think of scratching a stone into a dice right it might take you a hell of a lot of elbow grease and this is a guy who can't feed himself daily so he's put a lot of energy into that dice just to make it for your for your benefit so you know if you're a king or someone in power and you do not accept the dice then your high ranking nobility you've just basically um insulted a homeless person so where what position can a king insult a homeless person it kind of means uh, it's a disrespect, and how and, and how dare a king insult anyone in that manner? You would accept the dice, thank you very much, and you know, either compensate the man, or you would you would aim to obviously compensate the man in some sort of manner because he's obviously um, he's obviously made that for your benefit. So that's why you should always accept a gift unless it's going to do you harm. You know, beware of Greeks bearing gifts. 
Um, so anyway, so what I was thinking about this, and I phoned up the show, but I didn't get this point across very well, is that the man was not buying sex. The man is a, I was thinking about a Middle Eastern man, probably Muslim, definitely believer in God, definitely a believer in the afterlife, uh, and definitely was not buying sex in front of a daughter's dad. I don't think anyone's that stupid. But what he was doing, he was presenting a gift. Please take £25,000 now, enjoy the gift, use the gift, and then we will settle the gift in this life or the next. Now, obviously, he was not intending on settling it in this life. So essentially, what he was really doing, he was buying a bit of me time, not in this life, but in the afterlife. So it's very difficult for people without faith to actually understand what he was doing when he presented that gift to the, to the woman who was a young daughter of, of some guy who just happened to go to a swingers club with his daughter and watched an Arab guy um, um, do very well at the tables. And it, Sheila didn't get this. Nobody got it. They just thought, oh, man, wanting sex from women. No, he wasn't. He was wanting, dare I say, pleasures, maybe pleasures in the afterlife. I mean, who knows? Perhaps it was a non, no strings attached, attached a gift. Um, but, you know, there is the possibility that you've accepted something for free. And if you don't settle your debts in this life, the belief was always, because it's less common nowadays, that people understand this stuff, is that you'll settle all debts in the afterlife. Any debts that you have, any any sneaky things you've ever got away with, they will all be balanced off when you go on to the, um, the next life. Now, let's come back to this. So, why wanty? Wanty. I want. So, your own country or the people in charge of your country wanting from you for the u.s army now of course it's all capitalized it's not there but it's interesting they use the word once they can't use the word require they can't use the word um you know uh demand you know well in some cases they can but um you know generally they're just saying want oh i want a biscuit mummy i want a cupcake mummy i want a lego figure for christmas but nope <laughs> so this is this is an expression to the people that they have absolutely no power to force you. But I definitely want a cookie, mummy, and I want it from you for Christmas. Or the US, it might as well be Christmas. The US Army, nearest recruiting station, and probably someone would write that in by hand. But you get the idea, yeah? So this is the language. I, capitalised, want you. But again, it's a blank piece of paper. There's nothing here. Red border, capitalisation of words, all scribble. I don't know if I can just go to another... Aha! There we go. This is quite good. I wonder if I can zoom in a little bit. Woo! Wow, that's amazing. So, uh, this is the British World War I. In, on the right... Oh, oh, I've got my mouse. Imperial War Museum. If anyone's questioning the authenticity of this. Obviously, it's gone through some sort of Photoshop thing with these things up here. But this is essentially just a scanning copy of what was in original uh, World War I. Again, pointy finger, stern look. But it's a drawing. So I don't care who you think that looks like. It's not them. Uh, your country needs you again. All capitalised. So that, that, that's not there. You've got some flags here. Now remember this is World War I time. And I was like, oh, Germany? No, nope, that's Belgium. Belgium, Russia, the United Kingdom or Great Britain, whichever way you want to do it. France and Imperial Japan. We're all fighting the Germans apparently. We're all chummy chum chums. <laughs> <laughs> and who knows, in 20 years' time, that all changes. Um, so anyway, uh, what have we got here? So again, oh, what's this? Hmm, interesting. That looks like a red border, a red line. And there's one here, and it's written in red. So again, I would, I would argue that that is not there. Use of capitalisation. So don't imagine, don't imagine, you capitalise, you meet being, being, being like the owned thing. That's you, capitalise it. We need you, not the lowercase you. We're, um, you know, we'll come across that later. Okay. Uh, and it's very, very intentional use of... Look, why is this not all in capitalisation? Yeah? They could have just done that. But, oh, no, every man will start it like a newspaper. Hmm. Between 19 and 38. Don't imagine you are not wanted again. Want, we really want you. Please want, want, want... We want people... Well, we want... Well... Pff. Man, they do they're actually calling out for man here, but they've done a clever thing. They've not asked for their fellow man to go for it, they've asked for man as defined by them. Their definition of man. So you might read man here, but it's capitalization means it's not a man as you know it, it's a man as we we define it. Every man. 
between now it's gone down to normal 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 text so 19 and 38 years of age is nothing but apparently it's wanted with an exclamation mark ex soldiers up to the uh, again capitalization ex soldiers as we've defined it or as as have duty defined it have certain duties and obligations so that's that's a crucial you said the capitalization of ex soldiers up to 45 years of age men hang on it's coming from man i wanted every man and also, hey, we'll take some men. Men can enlist in the new army for the duration of the war. Okay. And here, it um, goes down here. Rates of pay, again, catalyzed. And then it goes down to like normal text. So the rates of pay are totally owned and determined and, and defined by the provider of your money or the, the people who require you to become soldiers. Lowest scales, seven shillings per week with food, with a capitalized F. So that's food defined by us as food. <laughs> Clothing as defined by us, hence a uniform and, you know, boots and all that other stuff. Guns and you know, blankets and tents, etc. This and and C is an etc. that's changed over the years. Uh, uh, it's something I came across in a, in a book of old. And I was like, oh, what's an and and a C mean? I kind of predicted it was etc. but I didn't, I've never seen it like that. Uh, in addition, and then you've got separation allowance for wives and children, as the wives defined by us and children defined by us, of married, defined by, we're defining your married men, and uh, separation from their family. So if you're under 18, or, yeah, I suppose you can fight, is it? I don't know, every man 19. I think there was a thing about not recruiting the youngest, infantry, infant, yeah, if you're an infant, you're an infant, you're not liable for your actions. So if you think you're an infantry man in the army, yeah, I'm an infantry man, and you're proud to be an infantile infantry man, not knowing what your actions are because you're in the army and you're killing people. That's why they're called infantile. They went for the young people who had lots of energy and didn't really care or had much thought for what they were doing. Um to their fellow people, possibly, uh, when separate from the family, so they're just basically giving different different pay grades for children. You know, the more children you've got, the more money your wife gets. Glorious. And uh, over here, this is just separation allowance for children leaving their mums and dads. So it's kind of like a chattel agreement, if you like. So if your your kid's under a certain age and is leaving the family, then they'll they'll um, pay your uh, mum and dad uh, for for going off to war. Your country is still calling. Your country. What is a country? And how does a country call anything? And calling in the future tense as well. So capitalization, it's not there. Fighting men, exclamation mark. Fall in, exclamation mark. <laughs> Full particulars are particulars. So we're going to define what particles, particulars, full particulars, can be obtained at any recruiting office or post office. So they're basically the arms into the community that um, allow this message to be spread out which is what the crucial function of the post office was. So that was a bit more in depth, uh, but essentially, yeah, you know, they're not, nothing there, nothing there, rate of pay is not even there. And then, you know, it's essentially, it was almost a blank piece of paper. Almost. And it's also in a square border. This one's black. So there we go. Let's go to the next one. We've got lots to do. There's a simplified one, you know, I don't know, the Union Jack or the Union Flag. Uh, JR, again, it's in a, a red border. Uh, George Regina, is it? Um, Regina, Regina. Uh, your king, your king. Hmm. And country needs you. Remember, a king is a title. So, emperor, your emperor, your mister, your master, your judge, your <laughs> pizza delivery boy, whatever you want to call it. And country, which is... Um, a border, I suppose, more than anything, and a land. Need you. We're needy people. We needy. We needy. We're at risk. <laughs> we need, and we need the U to turn into this. We need the lowercase U to turn into the capitalized U. And then a line. So ignore all that. And they're just saying, enlist now. <laughs> right. Again, so when you put a line or something, it kind of it's kind of like a new section. So we've got a new section here, and it says enlist now. So for no particular reason, just enlist now. Uh, that's a big complicated one. We're going to go simplified ones. Yeah, okay, let's do this one. So this is 1,069 other Manchester men, capitalization of the m-n, 
and you fully catalyzed and in red ink and the new city battalion obviously it's been created for someone's benefit so they obviously capitalization going on with the first letter is complete enlist not there now we're asking you really we're really trying to tell you to do it but without telling you to do it minimum height requirements join the new city battalion of the manchester regiment it's a pals corps yeah, <laughs> corpse. <laughs> uh, almost saying that it's a dead body. Um, yeah, so they're just really saying, look, all these people, all these guys, all these men have enlisted already. Why haven't you done it? And actually, there's something else that come actually in this. Uh, uh, that's just going order now, I suppose. So, young men of the Bahamas. So, this is the British Empire. Asking the young men, not man, men, young men of the Bahamas, and then a line, the British Empire, which divides that off. So the British Empire, catalyzed, because it has duties and responsibilities to certain people, is engaged in life, capitalization, and death, capitalization. Now that is curious to me. Struggle, life and death struggle. As define oh we're defining the life and death struggle so you're reading life and death struggle oh, they're in a life battle for their life and death but well what, what you think what you're reading is not what we're defining it as never in the history of England again the history as we define it of England as we define it and never since the misty distant past as we're defining it of two thousand years ago now think about what well, is World War One I'm pretty sure about this. Uh, well, let's just, you know, if uh, 2,000 years ago, I mean, what's 30 years in 2000s? So, so 30 AD, or 15 to 30, 40, 15 to 40 AD, not since the distant misty past of 2,000 years ago, has our beloved country been engaged in such a conflict as she, <laughs> is this a Roman reference? As she is engaged in today, because Rome was always a, a she. She. Yeah, this is that's curious. So I haven't done the history lesson on two thousand years ago, and what was such a huge battle back in fifty, fifty or around, let's say anything from zero to fifty uh, A.D. Uh, and why they would reference that on a on a on a war advertising. This is this is there's clues here to be given out. Um, yeah, I mean they're not even mentioning the um, battle of the battle of uh, Hastings. You know the invasion of ten sixty six. They've completely bypassed that. Oh, that was nothing. This is back to 2000. So they're going to a very specific event here, um, which is which is curious. Battle of Hastings, surely, wouldn't that have been like the biggest invasion of our native land? But maybe these are the people who did the invading, and maybe that's part of their success story. And they're talking about the proper history, their history, which goes back to 2000 years ago. Yeah, I'm speculating on that, but you know, if you want to do a bit of digging around in the history books, by all means. To bring to nothing this mighty attack by an unscrupulous and well-prepared foe, capital capitalization, his most gracious majesty, King George. So it's not there. We're not, we're not, we're sure as hell we're not in incriminating or putting any liability on his royal highness, King George, has called on men of the empire men we need men a few good men not our fellow man because we couldn't put that we couldn't get them we couldn't put them in a position where they get killed but men yeah all you people you can get killed men of every class creed and color so obviously they're, they're appealing to blacks now things are getting desperate uh to come forward to fight that the empire may and may be saved and the foe may be well beaten See, see that they start that they start this with a lowercase here. So let's just put that. So men of any creed, yeah, 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 to that, to that, the empire maybe. So okay, no. So they're definitely sticking that in, but they're sticking it in in such a way that it's not there because it's capitalized. And the foe maybe what this call is to you, the, the people we own. <laughs> the people who are, we are about to own. This call is to you, young man, because that would be infantile or infantry. Not your neighbour, not your brother, not your cousin, but just you. 
Wow. That's that's well put. That is really well put. This call is to you, young man. We're looking for the young man. But we're not because it's not this is this call is to young man. Not your neighbour, not your brother, and not your cousin. Just you. We want to influence you to become this capitalized you. And then again, fully capitalized. Several hundreds of your mates <laughs> have come up. So this is kind of like, let's talk on their terms. Have been medically examined, have, have been passed as fit. Wow, that's just peculiar. That's a bit off topic in my opinion. What is the matter with you? <laughs> oh man, brutal. Put yourself right with your king. See, lowercase, lowercase your king. Obviously, king has duties. This king has duties. Um, put yourself right with your fellow men, not fellow man. I've never heard of fellow men because they couldn't use fellow man. You know, look after your fellow man. Fellow men? Interesting. Put yourself right with yourself, your self. And your conscience. So saying, if you don't fight, you're going to be a coward. You're going to be, you know, you're going to have a guilty conscience forever. Come forward. There, you're the people we need. You people that want to fight because you have a conscience about not doing your duty for your king and your country. Come forward. And then a line underneath, enlist, capitalized, today. So it's almost like this section and that section are almost like together. And then this section here, the way it's been divided, is one thing as well. So this is this is one bit, and this is essentially two separate bits up here. But that's a fascinating use of language and capitalization in, in motion. These are government propaganda, and trust me, they know what they're doing. Uh, let's go next one. Oop, not that one. Yeah, we've done that one. Now, I don't know. I think this is German. Reichs, Juden, Juden, Jungen, Jungen, Kids, Day. Reign of the Kids Day, I don't know. The, okay, I just basically I've got this just to uh, just to kind of see that it's not restricted to um, to uh, you know the British side of propaganda. That you know this this whole pointing sketching. Um, but now this is a continental thing, so the, the system of law over there is, is is a different system. It's all Napoleonic and code based. So if they say you're going to fight them, you know, essentially they can draft you up, and if you don't do it, then they have their wicked way of you. But it's just interesting that the same propaganda material is being used uh, across across the seas in other nations, and again in the Germans, just seems a bit odd. Do Wala, I don't know, Wala, Wala. Social Democratin. Oh, Social Democratin, interesting. Nothing changes. So again, here's another one. Imperial War Museum. George Regina, using the crown and the royal crest. So this is coming from the king, almost like a king directly. Now remember the king, I've mentioned this numerous times, the king is a what, okay? The king is a thing. It's a creation. It's a, it's a belief that there's a king. Your king and country need you. Hmm. Uh, a call to... So that's one thing. And it's capitalised, so it's not there. A line. A call to arms. I like that. Arms. It's not used enough. Man at arms. Men at arms. It used to be man at arms. And then they changed it to men at arms. And now it's soldiers and infantry and all kinds of, you know, other, other terminology. Because we don't want to call about men and the right to arms. Or man and the right to arms. In addition to 100,000... Men, they were, they might have been men, but now they're definitely men because they're coming here to fight and kill people. To His Majesty's regular army, so that's obviously his, the, um, the kings created this for his benefit to protect his, his uh, empire. So an additional of a hundred thousand men to protect this guy's title is immediately necessary. Is we need it now? It's, it's still, it's kind of another way of saying need. It's necessary. And the present grave national emergency. Again, it's the nation as they've defined it to have duties and obligations, and the emergency is also as they've defined it. Interesting. Uh, Lord Kitchener is confident. So this is not this is this is not there because it's all capitalised. 
Lord Kitchener is confident that this appeal will be at once responded to by all those who have the safety of our empire at heart. Brilliant. Terms of service. General service for the period of three years or until the war is... Or... Or... A general service of a period of at least... You're going to do at least three years or until we say that the war's over. <laughs> Age of enlistment between 19 and 30. So they try to avoid like the, the, the proper infantry. How to join... Mostly because mothers don't like burying 16-year-old boys. Uh, how to join. Full information. Again, the use of the lines. Very important. So all these sections are individually, you know, they're all taken on their own. So there's that. There's, you know, there's this section. There's that section. There's this section. They don't necessarily relate to each other in any way. The fact that you're linking this together is your own stupidity. Um, how to join. Full information can be obtained at any post office in the kingdom or at any military depot. So again, they use the capitalization changes from lowercase here. And then it goes to capitalization. These things are as we define them. And then at the end, why not? God save the king, which is in capitalization, so it's not there. So, interesting. Anything else? I think that's most of them. But I think you get the idea how, in times of needs, they still stick to their strict, strict system of, um, you know, Knowing how that how their their language works and how their code because remember this is all codified information and the fact that we can read it technically is to our detriment and I was literally on the internet getting pictures of pub signs you know we used to have like the crown and anchor or the um you know the black swan or the white swan or the you know the the um the prince of Wales the king's head the queen queen's head outside the pub you'd always have a picture board of what what it was because we can see pictures oh that's a picture that. I'll meet you at the Ram. Okay, I look for the pubs. That's a swan. That's not the pub I want. That's a rose and fawns. Don't want that. Um, oh, look, look, there it is. There he is. I mean, that's the pub I want. The Crown or the Ram or whatever. You know, I'll, I'll go there. That's the one. That's where James is. So that you know, without having to be able to read this hieroglyphics in front of us, we could find our way around using pictures and stuff. Because obviously, writing was was um, taught to the people on mass much later on in history. Um, you know. Most people are illiterate, if you like. You know, we're all a bunch of um, layman, laymen. You know, the uh, um, you know nothing wrong with it. I mean, in some ways, it'd be a benefit not to know how to read and write, because then you wouldn't get embroiled in all this nonsense. You know, they wouldn't just have to write something like this, and you get all emotionally welled up and sign up to go to war and you know um, fight and kill people. You know, but you know whatever floats your boat. Um, yeah. So that's just an interesting thing. So next time you get a document through the post, whatever it may be, look for borders, look for colour, look for the use of capitalization, and just see if you can get your eye in it. Just try and train your eye to recognise, oh, so that's not there, that's not there, this is there, what does that actually say? And it says nothing really, it's, it's incomprehensible without that. You know, if you, if you, if you took that off, you took all the, the capitalization off, what is actually on this piece of paper. And obviously you're separating this off with lines, so that's not there, that's not there. It's basically, a, it's it's your imagination playing tricks on you. Come come, come, sign up and die, <laughs> in a cynical way. Or if you have a strong sense of national identity, then by all means we need you. It's um, either way, they can't force you, or can they? Um, but essentially we'll have the, those that choose or are willing to go first. And they're the ones we want. There we go. So there's a there's your um, quick introduction to the use of capitalization and language on something very specific that's been produced by um, the government over the course of times of crisis. <laughs>